Welcome, I am Brent Cook, and today I am playing Doomsday, and in order to play this very difficult deck, I brought in an expert, the one, the only, Max Carini. You may better know him as Wonder Pro. Welcome, Max. Brian, that, that deck's not that difficult, but thanks for having me. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty bad, Max, so I needed you to carry me. Max has actually joined this channel in a video before. You can find that video on the card above. And Max, I'm not trying to give him too much credit, but he's probably the best Doomsday player that I know. He's very, very good. And Max actually recently helped me with figuring out Slaughter Pact in the Epic Storm. So Max is going to carry me through a Doomsday, Doomsday League today. But before we get into any of Max's specific card choices, Max, can you tell the audience what Doomsday is looking to do as an archetype? Yeah, uh, Doomsday fits into the, uh, I guess you'd call it spell-based combo super type of decks, if you're one of those like stat tracky types. Uh, you play your titular spell, Doomsday, and in this case, Doomsday, uh, while it does have a lot of spells you maybe would see in like a storm combo deck, it honestly plays out more like Show and Tell or Black Red Reanimator, where you have the very powerful combination of Doomsday and Thassa's Oracle. The... Uh, particular advantage you get is that your kind of A plus B combo has your A piece Doomsday finding your B piece in Thassa's Oracle. Uh, the downside, comparatively speaking, is that Doomsday has a bunch of uh, peculiar costs associated with it. It's card disadvantage, it's life disadvantage, it's awkwardly costed. Um, so it's kind of janky, and you run a lot of janky cards to support it, like Edge of Autumn and Personal Tutor. Uh, but you get a very powerful, almost like Tinker-esque ability to put an opponent in check right away. Okay, so uh, the last time that I played this deck, I was actually running a more turbo-y list. And I mean, you're doing the same thing here with Personal Tutor, but the list appears to be even more turbo now with two copies of Cabal Ritual in here, along with Basic Lance. I'm guessing that's not an accident. Do you mind explaining that? Sure. Uh, a lot of these deck choices driven over the last, I guess, six-ish months are part of my uh, interminable campaign to make Delver less of an auto-lose matchup. Um, I think it's very approachable now, and it didn't used to be. Uh, particularly because I spent a lot of time playing this deck during uh, the like year or so of Ragavan being legal. What basic lands let you do um, is mainly just not lose your lands to Wasteland, which enables double Edge of Autumn piles, which are really life point efficient. You also gain access to um, a lot of flexibility in how you can develop your game state. So you can take really slow games where you just discard the opponent's counter spells a lot because you have a basic swamp you can lean on or you can put a personal tutor on the stack off of a basic island not get interrupted and then come in with a cabal ritual or something like that to have your triple black for doomsday that makes sense so the last time that i played this deck granted this was a while ago i believe the last time that i played this deck was the week following the ray van banning so it was like what 10 months ago at this point but uh, back then, the deck was a little bit different. A lot of people were still playing Ideas Inbound. The Consider pile, I believe, had just come out with Deep Analysis, and Pact and Negation was a staple. So all of those cards are not in your list. With Ragavan leaving, you are playing four traditional discard spells between Thoughtseize and Duress, but then we have Grief. So do you mind talking about the, the cards that have exited the deck and then some of the more recent inclusions? Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll start with what left the deck. Um, Deep Analysis and Ideas Unbound are, um, they're not quite close substitutes because they, they do different things, but they have the shared commonality of getting you for your pile very uh, efficiently. That you, you get a lot of the cards out of the stack, right? Uh, stack being, you know, your selection of five, not the gameplay facet. Um, the, the downside to these cards, though, is that they're very vulnerable to interaction, particularly Pyroblast, which um, within the last month, there's been like a pretty significant uh, meta shakeup. But within the last like month and then, you know, maybe the three to six months before it, a lot of gameplay is defined by main deck Pyroblast or uh, Pyroblast post board from just about any deck in the format that registers mountains. So... 
having your pile hinge on a blue spell that has a very awkward cost associated with it, either double blue or blue and several life points, and then getting hard stopped by a pyroblast is a very unfortunate play pattern. Um, uh, when you're playing against Tempo, and to a lesser extent, when you're playing against Fair Blue Period, the best hands that this deck can produce are just like a fistful of black spells, leading into a Cavern of Souls protected oracle, because at no point uh, can you, you know, have a Pyroblast interrupt what you're doing. That makes sense. So, do you mind explaining Grief in particular? Because this is a card that isn't found in very many lists, but I think makes a lot of sense. So, do you mind delving in on that? Sure, yeah. Um, I think I am the most uh, consistent registerer of, you know, Grief as an Evoke card. Um, I started playing it back in June. I top-aided two challenges, like, back-to-back, -back and, like, cooled off significantly since then, but I'm, I'm, like, a pretty big believer in Grief being an effective card. A close but less good card you can also run is Unmasked. Um, this was something that I kind of had in the back of my mind during... Uh, Ragaman being legal because Ragaman uh, more or less soft bans discard out of the format, which is really unfortunate because in Legacy Black only has like two good spells, Dark Ritual and Thoughtseize, so losing one of those is a pretty hard hit. Um, Grief, however, and again Unmasked, is such a high CMC card that a, an opponent could like hit it off Ragaman but then be unable to cast it. I ended up shelving this idea and just like never doing anything with it until someone uh, got at me over Discord and was like, hey, I like this list, I'm going to try out Grief. And then I thought, well, okay, instead of like a one or two of, I'm going to try it as like a four of, and I eventually like pulled back on it to about a two of. I think it's like a fine substitute to what would be, in this case, like the fourth Thoughtseize and second Duress in the main deck. So I'd probably be running the same eight discard spells, probably. But what Grief lets you do, and I guess this is the really important difference here, what Grief lets you do is um, have discard spells that scale in a different dimension because you can turn discard spells into, like, a, effectively a lotus petal for other discard spells. So instead of just having, uh, like, a grip of them in your hand that you can only cast so quickly because you only have one basic swamp, um, you can accelerate it out because against tempo, you're basically trying to get, like, four and a half mana by turn two because you need like a protection spell of some sort and then you kind of want to play around days if you can and then you also want to cast doomsday so that's like discard spell doomsday half the time you want to play around days so that's like four and a half mana which is a lot on turn two uh two of that can come from lands you can maybe get an extra few from your rituals and so what you're left with is you have to cheat the mana out some other way just like playing four Cabal Ritz or something, you get these all mana hands that do nothing. But when you're cheating on the, the mana cost of the protection itself by having like Force of Wills, Griefs, these like pitch cast um, protection to your combo, you can make up the, the mana requirement in other ways without like running into this problem of I'm just holding mana hands that do nothing. That makes a lot of sense. So one thing that did stand out to me a little bit uh, was that there's only two copies of Street Wraith. I have to imagine this has a little bit to do with the increased number of thought seasons since the last time that I played. And the only reason I mention this is with Grief, I imagine you want more black spells in your deck to pitch, and Street Wraith seems like a good candidate. But I also think that there's likely just, there's only so many slots in a deck, right? Like, do you mind briefly touching upon that before we head over to the sideboard? Sure. Um, these are uh, independently moving facets. Like, I do have fewer Street Wraiths and more protection spells than I think a lot of other lists, but those aren't, like, related. It's just more or less where the deck landed. I don't like having a whole lot of Street Wraiths because I don't like the play pattern of having to open with multiple Street Wraiths because it's very greedy to hold two, but cycling them early just puts your life lower and makes it very obvious what you're running. Um, also, Edge of Autumn and Street Wraith, to a certain extent, do compete for slots. You really do only need so many cyclers. I think I had maybe, like, one game in the last six months where exiling a Street Wraith to a Grief actually, like, caused a problem later in terms of how many cyclers I had available. And that's, that's again, one game in, like, half a year playing Grief. Um, 
You could play more street race. I mean, they are fine to just kind of generically speed up games, but they also contribute to higher variance hands, and that's not always what you want. That makes sense. So going over to the sideboard, we have the classic Force Negations. Doomsday is a deck known for not allowing the problems to resolve rather than answering them on the board. I mean, you have Force of Wills, a lot of discard in your deck. I mean, it just seems to be the common play pattern. I mean, there's two cards in the entire deck that answer is all permanent, and they're cards that are new to me, which are Snuff Out. But so we see some new cards, Subtlety, Snuff Out, Shield Dread. Uh, do you mind taking us through these three real quick? Yeah, uh, Subtlety and Snuff Out are both uh, begrudging acknowledgments of the initiative matchup, which consequently also reduced the force of negation count. You want the full four mostly for lockpiece decks, but now the premier lockpiece deck in the format is also putting out uncounterable creatures. So you can't just put you know, like eight full slots devoted to that. Um, I, I mean, I have Flusterstorms for combo also. There's generally like a couple slots you can devote to either Flusterstorm or Mystical Dispute. I decided to just make them fluster storms. That covers combo. You don't really need the full four force of negations at that point, which was usually like a standby for me. Then you have subtlety to go after um, Cavern Archon, uh, Cavern Shieldred, or Oracle in the Mirror, and uh, Endurance that is backed by an Allosaurus Shepherd. There's a split between snuff outs and subtleties just depending on where you want to board them because the cards don't play exactly the same. For example, in that Elves example, um, Allosaurus backed Endurances. Um, I wouldn't subtlety like a turn one Reclaimer, but I would snuff one out a lot. Um, so the split's useful. Like I don't think four zero is like ideal. The other way you could do it is like three subtlety, one Brazen Borrower, which makes you better against like random artifacts and a few other corner case scenarios brazen bar was super good it just it just barely did make the cut on this list um the shield dread is for um i mean it's it's great in the mirror it's incredible in the mirror but that doesn't really matter because like there aren't doomsday players basically uh it does come in a lot against delver though a lot of complex feelings on shell dread uh, but the short answer like the the really short answer is that like it's it's fine you you can run it Fair enough. So we're going to head over to match number one in just a moment, but I would like to make a quick note. So Max talked about Flusterstorm versus Combo. There's six discard spells in the main deck, five counter spells, and then Max has three Force Negation and two Duress on top of that. All right. So that is 16 ways to interact and not counting the Flusterstorm. And Max feels like he needs to bully me even further. It's just not right. And I'm not going to give Max a, a minute here to rebuttal. I refuse to accept that it's correct. I'm just going to go cry and then we'll play match number one. We hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Round number one. We are facing an unknown opponent, but before we get to that, Max, I forgot to ask you in the deck tech, where can the fans find you? Um, I, I do I do Twitter. I'm WonderPro on Twitter, also on Twitch. I don't do a lot of content, but if you're like, oh wow, when he finally gets around to it, I want to be aware um that's that's how you do it okay and for those of you that don't know max is a moderator or possibly admin i'm not really sure of the doomsday discord as well that's incorrect i do post there though i thought you were Did a moderator you oh i i i know a moderator there oh um, i mean i show up there a lot well i, I like max is not a big deal What's okay that? Not a big deal. Max is a casual. We shouldn't even listen to his play suggestions. But I have been told that with Doomsday, you're supposed to keep hands that turn to Doomsday. And if they don't, they're supposed to be a mulligan. Personal Tutor cannot get Dark Ritual. It only gets Sorceries. So Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, they're out of here. Max, do you keep Doomsday in hand with three lands? Or do you mulligan for a turn two Doomsday? Well, uh, there's a kind of an interesting thing going on here where your personal tutor can't find a ritual, but it can find a ponder that can find a dark ritual. 
Um, you do also have two Edge of Autumn, so if you do that and then you resolve your turn two Doomsday, it would very easily convert into a kill. I think the litmus test for sevens is that it's like within a cantrip of a turn two and has something else to offer. In this case, immediately converting to a win is something else. And within a cantrip of turn two does sound like, you know, pondering into a dark crit. So this is a keepable seven, but it's kind of on the low end of power level because you have to like do a couple of things. Okay. When it plays Chrome is... Mox. <laughs> um, well, uh, you do have three lands and two Edge of Autumn. So against an aggro deck, like a... Yeah, okay, this could go kind of well. Oh, okay, less well. Uh, uh, I mean, we'll just... Great. Okay, I, I have an idea. We'll get Threshold, and then we'll cast Cabal Ritual, and that will give us the five we need for Doomsday. You can also just Personal Tutor for another Doomsday. Right? Yeah, but that's not nearly as cool. The plus two cost is only applied to exactly the card they exile, right? That is correct. They take the personal tutor. Wow. Oh, uh, that's interesting. So what they said is that um, this card is too slow. Dark Ritual. Or well, the I card we were the... going to personal tutor for. Cool. It's like you already personal tutored. Um, I think the more plausible thing here is that they have another Spellbinder, right? Or they have the Anointed Peacekeeper that they can name Doomsday with. Uh, I believe that this uh, yeah, is a no, shuffle. Uh, yeah, like, days would be interesting to stop a follow-up Spellbinder, but they can just hit a land drop, and then also we're stuck with a Doomsday we can't cast still. That's a good card. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that it's okay in Legacy. You know, interestingly enough, I saw, I saw a content creator who was like, hey, what if we actually took Brainstorm out of a Storm deck that, like, usually always plays it? So, like, I don't know, man, maybe, maybe there's, like, two sides to this story. That person sounds like a real dummy. Really? I, I wonder if I could find, like, a video about this kind of thing, like, like in a card somewhere. Yes. Maybe. Oh, that's a cool play. I've never even considered using Touch of the Spirit Realm on your own, uh, Spellbinder. That's actually pretty cool. I like yeah, it. Yeah, and it's not like it's not like a thought not seer or whatever, so we don't actually get anything back. We're just sat by it twice. I'm gonna tell our opponent nice play in chat. I've never seen that before. This is a nice play. I I think that the days would have been like kind of good though, because they apparently didn't have another land or like anything else to do. But again, I we really do need a way to cast this doomsday at some point. I'm telling you, we're just going to draw Cabal Ritual. All right, so we find the Oracle. I'm just going to cast the Brainstorm here. I mean, this is a small thing. I don't know if this was intentional, but you did, in fact, play the correct land here. Um, you do want to crack fetches if, if for Underground Sea, since we already committed to that, because the ability to get a basic in the face of Archon using the Delta is kind of important. Uh, oh, hey, I, I think we're pretty close to winning, actually. Plus yeah. Three mana. So dark red, my gut here tells cycle. me we put back Edge Street Wraith, and that way we can pitch Oracle. This deck list does have two copies of Thassa's Oracle, so that would give us some protection. Yeah, you're on the money so far. We want a Force Protected kill for next turn, and we just need to redraw one of these two cyclers. Um, would you rather keep the Edge or the Street Wraith? Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'd rather have Double Edge. Yeah, because we're going to have all the lands we need. Um... And so if we get, you know, hit, we go to 13, we crack two fetches, we're at 11, we cut down to five. Like, it shouldn't be a problem life-wise, but uh, it's a good, like, there's no, like, operational cost here, because I don't think these decks really play Wasteland a ton. Our opponent getting in there, we'll take three going down to 13. Our fetch is going to put us to 12. This fetch will put us to 11. We'll lose half our life going to five. I think we're just fine here. Three mana. We'll let White Plume Adventure resolve. That card doesn't matter. Yeah, although if they find a planes and then like play a creature, we might want to handle that. Well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we have a win next turn, regardless of the creature. If it's like a Thalia or something, you want to force that. Oh, for sure. But I'm saying it's like it, like the like I don't know. I'm nitpicking. Let's just win the game. Oh, okay, here's something interesting. Um, they had a land drop, right? But did not play the planes? Because of the city of traders. Right, okay. Well, the 
also means we don't have to worry about like channeled like touch of the spirit realm or anything like that that is true yeah um so this uh i'll, I'll leave you to to get the pile going since it's double cycle we want to do a lines of diamond pile mm -hmm. um just make sure that you empty all the way through the deck to play around like the swords they're probably holding up and or solitude it's like the only thing that can go wrong from this point. i mean i'm gonna need your help here uh i mean i brought you on for a reason i don't know why you think that I would bring you on for you to not help with the pile. Like, that's the part I need help with, Max. Okay, well, since you're going to lose one of your fastest oracles to what is probably going to be a Lion's Eye Diamond, you should select the other one. Oh, that's and interesting. Also, and then also a Lion's Eye Diamond. So, um, there's two. So, the way that this works is we're going to cycle into Lion's Eye Diamond and then cycle again. And from there, we will have three other cards in our deck. I think we want to select double street wraith and or ooh, we could get use we could use the consider here because we'll have an extra blue. So let's put the consider in. And then uh, it's, it's cyclers and your favorite cantrip. In this case, your favorite cantrip can be consider, so you don't even need to do two cyclers. So um So it looks like I have an extra card here. Um, yeah, it's not particularly relevant because you have to mill it so the opponent gets to see it. You can't conceal information. All right, I'll just do double street wraith. Yeah, I think there is probably some like minor technical reason why it might matter what card you pick, but I'm inclined to think that it's not super important. Okay, so the first card goes on the bottom of the deck, correct? Uh, yes, click each card to put it on top. So the, the Thassa's Oracle is going to be all the way on the bottom. And we just need to make sure that all these cyclers come by after the LED. So then we will start by sacrificing an underground seed to draw a Lion's Eye Diamond. One of the nice things about Doomsday, I mean, Doomsday is a really expensive deck, don't get me wrong, but it is nice that it only needs a single Lion's Eye Diamond. The downside about Doomsday, you need four underground seeds, which is kind of a steep cost if you don't own them. But if you already own four um, underground seed, only needing one diamond is kind of nice. So we're going to put this cycle on the sack by sacrificing a land. And now we will discard the our hand to lines out diamond to make three blue. We're gonna draw consider, pass consider. We're gonna put this to the graveyard. Also, I love the new UI on uh, consider. You just like surveil one, so it's graveyard or not. Before it was like yes or no if you would like to put it on the top or bottom, and it was just like a little bit bad. People complain that I play slow online because. I do, but like if you look at the <laughs> UI, I have to navigate and I have to like tape down the control key to get my LED to work or whatever. Like you, you'd empathize, or maybe you wouldn't, but I empathize. That was actually a really nice win. Uh, granted, we did have double cycler to make it a little bit easier, but consider made that so easy, and I can see why you don't actually need deep analysis or ideas inbound uh, playing it this way. So right. like you want to get through the pile, but your cyclers are so good in context that usually you you do have some games where you just need a little extra help. And I think consider is good enough on that at its own. Uh, it also kind of um, there's a pile you can do where you brainstorm, you pick up cycler, LED, uh, Oracle, and then you put back one card like at random from your hand and an Oracle and then you cycle into the Oracle with consider you can surveil that extra card from your hand and do the pile like perfectly in the sense that you don't lose to removal so that's kind of neat yeah so max i have to imagine we're boarding out the cavern versus the non-force deck and then uh dress as well what other cards do you take out or am i wrong about these uh you're right that they're not in force deck but they are a chalice deck so cavern's kind of good because if they chalice two you lose on the spot Okay. Uh, also, because you do occasionally run into the like anointed peacekeeper or like spellbinder type of thing, it is just a land that provides mana to cast Oracle. So it soft checks multiple things that you know are going to happen to you. Um, from here, uh, I think grief and thoughtsies also come out. Um, really? The acceleration of grief is not actually really good in context here because they're not fighting you over mana. And discard spells on the draw, especially against a Chalice deck, I just don't think are that great. 
Okay. So um, So, I'm going to share my thought process. is like they could have Archon of Amiria, which is often a turn two. It can be turn one, don't get me wrong, but it's often turn two. And those things also beat Mind Break because the deck does play uh, somewhere between zero and two copies of Mind Break. So I was also, this hand is bananas. Uh, I was just interested in that. Did we sideboard? Did it keep our sideboard? I believe so. Because these are all main deck cards. Okay. Yep. Okay. I would have considered Force of Negation. I know it's unintuitive against like a creature deck to want Force of Negation, but it can come after their Chalices and their Mana Acceleration, which can be pretty important. So like, for example, our hand now would like cease to exist if we didn't have a Force of Will. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, Max, you're a friend, so I'm just going to be honest with you. You could have just told me. Come on. You hit some... I was still talking. I was like, oh, wow, Cavern of Souls. What a what a useful card. All right. So I think I want to grab Underground Sea with the f- Strand for the reason that Max mentioned. That we have Polluted Delta for basics later. And then we will personal tutor to go get the card Doomsday. How do you feel about playing these out now? I feel like playing uh, at least the Lotus Petal. Um, one thing that we might want to consider is how much we want to play on Mind Break at this exact point in the game. I'm inclined to say, like, if we are going to play three spells, this is the turn to play three spells. Because yeah. now we don't care about Chalice Zero. And since we have this LED, we're, uh, we're soft-checking Anointed Peacekeepers and all that really well. Because you can just build Cycler Piles, where the only spell you'll play is, like, maybe a Consider... And then you crack your LED in response. You have tons of mana to pay for uh, an upcosted Oracle, but you're also playing under Mind Break Trap. That makes sense to me. Also, I'm a really big fan of just beating the initiative deck. Uh, I mean, F this deck. Like the deck that plays Chalice of the Void, Archon of Emeria, Mind Break Trap, like you get whatever's coming to you. They opened up Triple Chalice. Wow. And us without our Force of Negations. We got so lucky. All right, uh, so, so now we just do... Do you say the hard thing. way? So This is like a this is a small and off-topic thing, but one thing I do like about having um, Chalice and like Cabal Ritz or whatever is that you are a lot better against Chalice on one. So should I do the double Oracle or should I just do Quad Cycler? Uh, the, it kind of depends on what you're trying to beat. Um, can you move this? They just have a City of Traders, right? Correct. They have no uh they have like no clock right now and anointed peacekeeper is double white and they can't accelerate it out because they have chalice zero so i think what you can do is a slow pile that just uh is a single oh, it's not even a slow pile we just win next turn you can just pick like four cyclers in a single oracle right like what are they really going to do to you well that's what i was asking uh, yeah. I mean, you're the expert. Like, Concern is <laughs> we're going to eight life, but since they just literally don't have white sources and lock themselves out of acceleration, it's going to be really hard for them to, um, to like really challenge us here. The the like absolute brick outcome is, I guess, if they just go like white source spirit of the labyrinth, that would not be ideal. Ooh, okay. So if they did that play, I think I'm actually supposed to put the street rates above the right. edge of autumns. Oh, yeah. So that's a, a small misplay I just made right there. I didn't consider Spirit of the Lab. It's fine. Not like a lot. Some of the early lists played it, but I think everyone's off it because it's like obviously an underperforming card across the meta. Um, the initiative deck is like looking to do a lot of things, but draw restriction. I mean, like it's on brand because this deck is just like extra steps D and T. But I don't think it's a good pick, <laughs> you know, across the field. Maybe that's how we'll label the deck: extra steps D and T. So this um, this super fast pile also lets you uh, point immediately using only one single spell, right? So we're good against Archon. Uh, we also can come in immediately against uh, Loran, the whatever, and we don't even need this LED if they come after it with Loran. So it's a good, uh, I don't know if bait's the right word, because it's just a solid play for them to make. All right, they have the Peacekeeper. So now all you need to do is remember to crack your LED at some point within your the quad cycler. Oh, so I I shouldn't do it in my upkeep is what you're saying. That's a bad time to do Uh, it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, I don't think Peacekeeper can come after our cyclers, right? It says activated abilities. They named Dark Ritual. 
don't uh, think that was the correct name, but can you can you mouse over anointed peacekeeper real quick? Yeah, uh-huh. activated abilities. So it would have stalled us a turn because, like, let's say they named like Street Wraith, which would have been on top if we built our pile like optimally. Um, we would have been in this weird situation where we'd have to like pay to do one, and then they'd hit us, and then we have to come back and like pay to do the other, cracking our LED for mana. I feel like we actually could have lost to this because uh, I I like blanked on that, but uh, instead we are victorious. One. Look at us. I know, like, I should remember this because uh, people were talking in, like, the Vintage Tournament that Anointed Peacekeeper is really good in the Initiative deck because it's good Bizarre Bagdad hate because it hits activated abilities. It's worth noting, uh, I believe you said that it's double white. It is only a single white. It's the one that's double white, then. Uh, I'm not sure. Palace Jailer? I think it, maybe I'm thinking of Palace Jailer. It's fine, though. We got a victory. We'll see you all in match number two. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two with Max Carini, aka Wonder Pro. Max, I, I'm, we're facing an unknown opponent. I want to keep this. We have turn two Doomsday. You told me that's all I could ever want in life. And actually, it's just a turn two win because we can ponder off the pedal. I'm not going to let you tell me to mulligan. It's just not going to happen. I mean, this is fine. It it passes the litmus test. I don't know if we necessarily will end up pondering into a kill depending on what the opponent. Oh. The, 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 that's an interesting start. Eight cast. How do you feel about your eight cast matchup? I think it's approachable, but it's definitely losable. Uh, a cool thing grief lets you do is just have a good way to interact with force, even in the face of chalice. And you've got a lot of puddles and cabal rits, so you can get your doomsday cast. Um, the way you end up losing to eight cast a lot is um, not chalice on one early, but more like. Um, oh, this is an eight cast. Never this mind. is the epic gamble. I, I was a little um, surprised well, when they didn't imprint there. It looks like they're going for a relay. You're a, you're a relay enjoyer, right? I, I'm a relay. I'm not afraid to say it. it is now my all time favorite magic card. It's past grape shot. I love the card. Well, uh, okay. So there's like no bad outcomes for you. You either win or you get to see a relay deck win. It's... I actually That's just, right. Ooh, uh is this a turn no it's a turn one doomsday but i don't think it's actually good enough would you just ponder looking for force here instead um i cannot see on my screen what cards they've managed to find with their relay how about this can you see now max oh good the burning wish is uh not one of the cards Uh, right right it's not one of the so they've got a bunch of mana a Bergy one card in hand. So um thinking is if we personal tutor for a doomsday, we can certainly win next turn because we'll just go darker at doomsday, uh cycler plus um LED. There's always a bunch of ways to win next turn, right? The problem is we can't personal tutor and get into our pile all in the same turn. It doesn't quite work because if the street ray finds our doomsday, then it can't combo with the LED. If we use um, they pedal Dark Ritual to play the Doomsday, then there's no pedal for us to do our ponder, blah, 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 right? So we need an extra turn somewhere. And it sound, or it looks like this turn, um, what they might end up doing is just Bergy into another big relay, which I think we're actually fine with if we just win next turn. Um, the, the downside, or like the way this goes really poorly for us, is if they do back half Bergy and their last card in hand is Echo of Aeons, because then you kind of sort of lose on the spot it, um, it doesn't need to be echo it could be a gamble it could be a burning wish um just want to point that out yeah yeah something something echo or echo adjacent right which is like which is to your point like 10 cards in their deck um so if we ponder and we hit um if we hit force i think our issue is how do we win from there because they they also have this relay and i don't know if 
we force something and they get another big relay and then we're put in the same position of we have to personal tutor again. All right, I'm making the executive decision. We're going to put Doomsday on top. And just in case, I'm going to play out our pedals. Um, in case they echo, we That's will have resources in play. Yeah. Um, so now we, we are threatening a win next turn, and they're threatening a maybe win and or maybe relay. And, you, and the neat part about them relaying is that they get a bunch of cards, but then we just kill them. So it's, it's like they got no cards. Well, I, I don't want to talk badly about relay here. You could talk badly about Bergy God of Storytelling and Ancient Tomb. Those are two cards I do not approve of that we've seen so far. Uh, feel free to trash talk those, but every other card in this deck is perfect and beautiful and wholesome. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You want to see a Galvanic Relay here, right? Both because it means we win and also because, like, Relay is pretty cool and rad. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So let's, yeah, let's just hope for a really big Relay. I actually got uh, an artist proof or artist print of Galvanic Relay this week signed by the artist saying, Keep Storming. It is hanging on my wall right there. It's, it's great. Pretty cool. Um, the last time I was buying cards in paper, I did pick up a set of Galvanic Relays. I do, I do have them. I just haven't gotten around to whiteboarding them. For those of you that don't know, Max is someone who whiteboarders all of his cards, no matter what they are. He's the opposite right. of me in that way. I want Japanese foil signed. Max wants the ugliest thing possible. The ugliest thing. Oh no, it's back half hard fell. Oh, please no echo. Not looking good. This card's Grim Monolith. Gamble. Ah. Oh. Um. Well, no, they need a red card to imprint with the Chromox, right? Because the, uh, the they have a, can't. Uh, I guess the can, source blue can they play this as a land? I believe that they can. Um, I think so. Not a multi dual face card expert here. I believe that they can play so. the Shatter Skull as a land. I think we might be getting Echo here. I think the way we set it up is correct, though. Um, because even if your Ponder hits a Force of Will, uh, you use up the Ponder, so you don't have a way to get the Doomsday off the top with Personal Tutor and then cycle into a win. So you'd have to hope for, like, the nut ponder of hitting, like, a force and a doomsday. That's fair. Like, I probably would have settled for force land. Yeah, I mean, force land would be fine. Uh, it wouldn't matter, like, a ton, though, because, again, the personal tutor puts the doomsday on top, and then you untap and draw it, and then your same one land can cast a dark grit. Like... Um, we can win or lose this game off of one land, and us having one land is probably not going to be the deciding factor. Um, does our opponent know that they can play the land and then gamble? Because our opponent should not be bricked here, right? You may play those cards this turn. So yes, you can play, and they do it here. So they, they, sh the they should gamble for Echo. It's not looking good, Boo Boo. Uh, I guess if they do put Echo on the stack, um, we should not cycle. Early. No, right? Because they there's not going to be mana. Oh no, no, no! You don't cycle because you know your top card. Um, they have no mana floating, so they could switch phases. Out. Right, it's not going to be very helpful unless you want to like crack for blue in case we draw into brainstorm and then can brainstorm into counters they should play the grim monolith here and then that way they'll have an extra mana and they do oh, hey floating mana okay got them uh, game mechanics i mean they made the right play here yeah um do you want to crack the led i think it's fine to crack it yeah because um they do need startup mana after the seven so they have Chrome Mox Relay. Burning Wish is not one of the uh, cards. Uh, so they have another Bergy, a Relay. And then possible 14 cards off the Hornfell. I believe that we're just oh, yeah. dead. Yeah, we're, we're kind of dead, but who knows? Ooh. Oh, wow, okay, we, we're dead. <laughs> Unless they somehow like break off of 21 cards and then we draw Doomsday. Up for that. I think my only concern here is uh, no disrespect to our opponent. They are playing glacially slow. Uh, they got a lot 
lot going on. There's there's a lot of factors to consider, actions to take. Put like four Mox Opals this game. That can't be easy. And wow, they're tapping it for the worst color in Magic, white. All right, uh, they undid. Really, the worst. We talked about this in the deck tech, but there's like a real dearth of playable black spells in Legacy right now. I mean, we're playing a lot of black spells. So what does that say about Doomsday? Uh, well, you know, as I mentioned in the deck tech, it does play a lot of janky cards. Hmm. And they have the defense grid. I'm gonna go ahead here and just hit my F6 key. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we can't can't find interaction in like a meaningful way right now. Unless you want to try and cast like the best days of your life off of Wraith. Days of your life. That would be a great YouTube channel uh, for blue players. Maybe Brandon needs to like rebrand into playing control. Or, oh, they're switching faces. Okay. So they found the issue here. They play a diamond. That's one from their hand. Interesting. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're just dead. Wish yeah. That, yeah, that wish they can cast. So we're out of here. Okay, so we just need to see our opponent click on Tundra's of Agony, and then we can go to the next one. Burning Wish. They do select the Tendrils. Okay, yes, I would like to concede the game. Max, we need to fix well, that. Well, that was not ideal. So we um, definitely want I these would've... Force Indigations. We want Duress. We want Foster Storm. And the Leyline. Leyline might be seem a little bit weird, but they are an Echo of Aeons deck. Um, so, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd like to guess the sideboard plan first before you give me the answer. So I believe that we take out Cavern, and then from there, I think you could take out Cabal Rituals, because we're not trying to be the, the aggro combo deck in the matchup, if that makes sense. We're just trying to really control the game, so I think we can get rid of Cabal Ritual. And then we need five more slots. You could probably board down at least one Lotus Petal, and then we need four. And that's kind of where I get stuck because it seems like everything else in the deck now is insanely good. All right. Um, I, I think Lotus Petal is actually really good to keep it cast your cards faster. It's also like um, one of your few ways of representing blue mana. So you can do something like double this card spell or hold up a Fluster Storm. Uh, it's also just good to have mana rocks against the wheel deck. Uh, I would cut Edge of Autumns here, because uh, while this deck, technically a combo deck has a capacity to deal damage, it's not um, it's not really what the matchup's about. From here, I would cut Days, just because they're a big mana, like Ancient Tomb Opal deck. I think Days really does lose value here, and one of the best plays you can make is having like two lands up to go Darker Doomsday, Brainstorm into an immediate kill. Um, and then I would cut two personal tutors from here. You can cut all four uh, if you are willing to bring in Shell Dreads. And then this is kind of optional, but I think Cabal Ritual is actually kind of okay compared to like Consider and Island, which are relatively low value in the combo mirror. You don't really need basic islands. There's not a wasteland coming from the opponent. And Consider, there's not really removal coming from the opponent, would except you... for like, I guess, upgrades, I guess. Would you rather have Shield Dread or would you rather have the personal tutors? I think it's really close um because unlike other storm decks where i think children can be played around slash ignored like a big part of what their deck does is draw sevens right so uh restricting them and they don't really have blockers and all that it, especially when you have cabal ritz we have 30 um, seconds are we boarding in children <laughs> okay, well, uh, bring it in for content and i'm going to keep talking about the choice because uh, <laughs> one of the things you observe is that right personal tutor it can be kind of awkward in combo mirrors because it lets the opponent know immediately where the game's going and it is also again a top deck tutor so you can't have you know everything going on as far as um as far as like holding up disruption and finding your doomsday because if you never feel comfortable casting a sorcery speed tutor to find your doomsday you basically don't have one Okay, that makes sense. Would you keep this? Like, my concern is that the hand doesn't actually do anything, but we do have Force Blue card, turn two, Brainstorm Fetch. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not... you have a good Brainstorm here and a couple of Forces. Um, this is very close. 
because this is also a matchup where having an early discard spell is really good. We're also on the play, so we can just go right in and win the game. Um, this is a very underpowered seven, in my opinion, but it's like justifiably keepable because you can also just uh, rip a doomsday off the top and immediately win the game. So you would keep. I think it's a very defensible keep, but I would probably be inclined to mulligan, honestly. Okay, I'm down for mulliganing. Like, it didn't seem that great to me. And this seems so much better. Uh, I think we can just get rid of the diamond here. Uh, it's kind of close. Diamond is, like, the worst card, but a lot of these cards are hitters. So, uh, yeah, I think diamond is just, like, the least amazing in what is otherwise an already stacked hand. All right. So Cabal Ritual uh, showing itself as being much worse than Dark Rit here, because if this was a Dark Rit and you hit land two, you just win on the spot, whereas here we uh, don't win on the spot. Yeah, well, uh, winning on the spot is nice, I hear. Right. Uh, I would leave, yeah, I would leave with this Duress, because they're a Mana Rock deck, and you don't want to be in this position where you just, like, are playing discard spells against an empty hand. Your counter magic can always be good, whereas your um, your discard spells are like vanishingly good. Their this hand does not play magic. <laughs> yes, we we caught them with an initiative opening. Ah, oh, <laughs> they do like, Sibian Spirit God. That's not fair. It's fine. They can't play further spells, so we've wow, right on time. All right. Ooh. Okay. okay. So we're going to shuffle away at least one card next turn. I think that card should probably be. I guess Force of Negation is better than Force of Will here. Uh, their hand is like one other Bergy and two Burning Wishes, right? So I guess you could also shuffle away the Thoughtseize. Yeah, I feel like this Thoughtseize is going to be the least useful of like anything and everything we'll encounter. I would float Cabal Rit off of like the weird off chance we need two forces. but uh, I think the reality, card you put on top just doesn't matter. I would not have put the Doomsday on top, but I mean, yeah, it basically doesn't. Like, I don't want to get, I don't want to get killed by like a pop fly surgical shuffling away our Doomsday. But what's probably going to happen next turn is we have to ponder trying to find land two. I mean, if well, only there was stuff. a basic island in our deck that we could have drawn, but instead it's living in our sideboard max. Fine. Um, you want the, if you, you don't want to cut both basics, and of the two, Swamp is just like a little bit better, because if you're doing Runner Runner lands, if you draw a bunch of Swamps, you can cast a Doomsday, whereas if you draw two Swamps on an island, you're just hitting life and dying to like a Bergy. I was just trolling. I'm completely fine with boarding out an island. It's just fun yeah, to make fun of you, because we boarded out a land and now we're stuck. Yeah, I mean it... Wow. All right, so they've solved their red source problem. Uh, do we force a negation of pedal? I don't think you're allowed to, because they can just Burning Wish into Relay, because the Bergy yeah. just makes the triggers. Uh, wait, that wouldn't work, because they'd have two mana total. So I do think we force a will this, or force a negation this. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, we're casting the Ponder next turn, right? Yeah. So I should we hang on to the fluster? Because we need our ponder to find a second land, so that second land can cast a fluster. We know both the cards in their hand. It's another Burgie and a Wish. Correct. So they can Burning Wish for Gamble, but that doesn't do much. Um, yeah, because you have to use the Lotus Puddle, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about like an Echo that they can then cast off of Tomb Puddle. Come on, land. Shuffle. Uh, not looking good. So I guess the one upside here is barring a third amazing top deck in a row, this Burning Wish isn't that dangerous. Uh, so that doesn't let them echo. But it does, it does let them put over. Horn into play. Oh, yeah, that too, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, more worried about MP to ones. <laughs> Have you considered putting more mana in your deck? Uh, I thought about it. Hmm. You could run four petals. You could run, like, three Cabal Rits. You could run four petals and three Cabal Rits. So for those of you watching at home, Max and I play a lot over Discord, and whenever things look the worst for me, Max reminds me that I chose to play these cards and how... Uh, all these other sort of dagger comments, so it feels a little bit nice to be able to make one back at max. 
like how this is just like an informed attribute and the audience has no way of verifying this. <laughs> it's true, though. Or, 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 I mean, are you going to deny it? I think a lot of the complaining I do is about like things my opponents do in matches that I then end up winning. Oh, wow. They found the line, Max. They got the empty. Called it. Uh, this is actually very good for their part because uh, we can't doomsday past the turn. So even if we hit the second land, we're kind of still deadsies. Oh, wow. We're in a rough, uh, tough spot here. Draw. We could take the oh, yeah. Bergy, but that doesn't matter. I think we're dead unless we get a miracle brainstorm. Yeah. Uh, well, not not just one, but two Miracle Brainstorms, right? Um, why would it have to be... Is there no three cards that could possibly win for us? Uh, no. No, there are not. Unfortunate. Yeah. Well, uh, it looks like we've been gambled. Bummer. The unfortunate uh, turn of events. They needed to hit their gamble game one. They hit their gamble game one. We needed to hit our land two game two. We did not hit our land game two. Yeah. I think we made some like pretty good choices though. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, and Max, I don't know if you remember this individual, but I certainly do. Achilles 27, the Maverick Legend. We're on the draw, but we do have a turn one Doomsday. There's very little chance that I mulligan this. Yeah, it's, it's not just a turn one Doomsday, it's also a protected turn one Doomsday. And, um, point of being Maverick, you have a discard spell that can take creatures, which is really neat. Something about you can't take the Maverick out of the uh, pilot or some top gun reference, I don't know, but we get to do the thing here. Yeah, um, because we have a pedal, I think it's um, probably fine to go get an underground C. I think it's just like free to lead off on the grief, though. Yes. Um, honestly, we probably should have done that before uh, the land. making our land. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's it's kind of fine. You just take um, the greatest source of damage here because uh, we did this Thalia. It's not super relevant because we're kind of done casting non creature spells. Is it okay if I go pedal dark or doomsday? Um. You can. Uh, what that lets you do is put more lands into your pile, which are basic. Like if you fetch a land out, it's like a one man of It's like a one life street rave, right? Because you got a card deeper into your pile, and then um, you didn't lose two life. All right. So we definitely want an oracle here. We want to put in an underground sea. I want to put in like two underground seeds, even because you have two fetch lands. Oh, hear me out though. So. Uh, I guess that's true. So the downside about... So if our opponent's smart and they waste us. And our opponent is a very good player. So I have to imagine they're smart enough to wasteland our Misty here. And then we draw the other underground seat. It's a little weird. So I would put in one personally and then just put in cyclers. That make it worse if you draw your one underground seat, though. Because if your cyclers are edge of autumns, then like... Where do you get the lands to sacrifice, right? No, hear me out. So on their turn, they wasteland your Misty, and then you have to fetch. So if you put in an, a second copy of Underground Sea, you could potentially draw it, stopping you from winning. That's that's accurate. Um, you're probably going to have to make like a very heads-up play to wasteland a fetch. And what you could do at that point is just like pass turns, right? Like if they're wastelanding, they're not developing their Scrib Ranger. They can't have like a clock and wasteland you all at once in this early stage of the game. I mean, our opponent's like pretty good. Like, I just don't think that they're going to make a a play like this. Like I would count on them making the correct play. Okay. I mean, the alternative, um, if you're very concerned about that, is you can also uh, something like have your underground C and then have like a if you're worried about the deck getting shuffled, I guess you probably would need, you probably couldn't do Brainstorm, because the other thing that you can do in these situations is, like, Brainstorm, put your island back, fetch for the island you just put back. 
because uh, really the only thing I'm concerned about, given how advantaged we are, is just not losing to like their random top decked endurance. All right, so I think this is the pile. Let's just play it slow. Yeah, like um, you beat endurances by just getting extra draw steps, and since they again they can't wasteland you and develop creatures all at once, um, you you tend to be really advantaged here. Like this isn't you know breaking news, but um, turn one doomsday is really good against the um, uh, the non counter spell deck. What? I'm sorry, like, how did you stack this pile? None of your business. You were too busy talking, I made a pile, it happened. Okay, um... <laughs> I, I saw, like, an underground sea and then a street right... I... Okay, I... It's fine, we're gonna take multiple draw steps. It's... Oh, man, okay. No, uh... It's fine, just crack both the fetches in your upkeep after you get the street rape, but before you draw the underground seed. It's fine. Look, your opponent even made the play that you were thinking. It's it's all good. We're a hundred percent large brained in this scenario. So I'm going to draw the street wraith and then double fetch. That was my plan. Yeah, yeah, that, that's substantially fine. But I also think our opponent's smart enough to waste here, but Maybe they're waiting to see if I fetch in my upkeep. No. So we just double fetch and then win? I'm fine with that. That works. Because they tap their uh, white source. Um, if they do have an endurance, they have to evoke it. Which means that we probably have enough time to pick up and cast the second oracle. And they'll put four cards back. Uh, you know, actually, we were dead to the second wasteland. If they had the endurance. Yeah, I guess we would have needed um, to play our island. Like, wait a turn, play our island, find one duel. And All right. if they endurance, we can touch the second. Yeah, that's how we would have done it. So we're facing Maverick. I imagine we want our creature answers here. Once again, I want to board out Cavern. I want to board out Duress. Uh, so it's 62. So, do you board out Grief? Uh, I do board out Grief here. Again, the... I think Grief underperforms um, in certain matchups like this, where there's not really like a mana tax issue. You can go Dark or Doomsday and then like Thought sees them later. If anything, that's occasionally better because you're not putting yourself in range of a Mind Break trap. Um, another consideration is that if they are playing Pyroblast, which they often are, you might actually want the Cavern. Um, I like cutting one Edge of Autumn, but not both. Uh, because Edge of Autumn underperforms at playing through a uh, an endurance. One card that you can actually use. We saw black endurance. for what it's worth, so they're most likely not playing red. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I, I would cut one Edge of Autumn and I would add one Nile Spell Bomb. Uh, it's really good against endurance. It, it's also a black mana sink while you're sitting on this uh, basic swamp. I'm a little surprised uh, by the spell bomb here. It's it's a good way to play around endurance. It also lets you draw using black mana, which is um, pretty good. And again, the the best spells you can get a lot of the time are just a bunch of black spells. Okay. Uh, I, so I know this doesn't have a doomsday in it, but I'm pretty inclined to keep this. Yeah, I think this is fine. Um, Again, I usually take, like, one cantrip within a turn two Doomsday and also does something else. This does something else. Importantly, it lets you have a Force of Will in case they have, like, a Deafening Silence or something. Also have um, Edge of Autumn. I'm just going to get the consider... basic here and ponder. Okay, I was going to say one thing we could consider is holding the ponder to pair with our fetch land. Um, turn two. But, um, yeah, this, this also is good. <laughs> Or could you have it all? Uh, do you doomsday this yeah. turn? Um, I Okay, so one thing we can do is if we take the Thassa's Oracle, we have Force of Will still up. And then what we can do on our next turn is we play uh, Fetch a Black Source, Dark Rit for Doomsday. Um, and then we cycle into our second Oracle with Force Pitching Oracle to defend the, the first one, right? Because we'll have a pedal on an island. We can just cycle into, okay, we got a yeah um oops 
I mean, we could have done like a like a fancy like doomsday with snuff outs pile, but I don't know if you really want to do that. Nah, I just want to win. So yeah, so now we have uh, we have our darker and our doomsday, and you have two choices here. You can like go for the gusto and just cycle into oracle, accepting that if there's like an endurance or something, we don't have a backup oracle because we have to pitch it. You can can you build a brainstorm slower. days pile? Build a brainstorm days pile. Um, probably. Uh, we did keep days in, so that's good. We do have. So okay, we'd have to. So hear me out. From my perspective, and I could be wrong, so I want you to double check my math here. I think that we can do second cycler into brainstorm, and then the brainstorm will draw into lotus petal days oracle. Um, you need to put two cards back. So how are we? doing that how are you affording oh uh, okay um so what you would have to do is like cycle into brainstorm brainstorm draws led two cyclers but then you don't have a way to get to the oracle the, the short answer appears to be no so um you get a pile that goes right for an oracle and accepts losing to other stuff or you can try and build around opposing cards, accepting that that makes you worse against like just like the stuff that they play. You know, what would you do? Since they have no clock, and I'm at eight life, and I'm already holding a cycler, a one that costs me no life, no less. I would probably just try and do like a, a draw thoughtsies that I can play off of my basic, and then cycle into the oracle because it it puts me ahead of like an endurance or something. So I'm going to ask you a question here. What do you think about building a pile that can force? Like, uh, we'll put an Oracle in there, but like, what about like putting like brainstorm force blue card cantrip or something? So I guess you can uh, do that. Yes. I think generally speaking, that just like costs you more cards, right? Because you need force and a blue card. Okay. So we're spending a lot of time here. Uh, why don't you tell me what you do? Like I said, I, I like just having a Thoughtseize on top. So I lead with the Thoughtseize. And then, you know, that inspects them for having, like, Endurance or whatever. And then uh, the other cards can just be, like, your favorite Cyclers, I guess. I kind of like fitting a Consider in somewhere in case they have another um, Spirit of the Lab. Because we have uh, enough blue mana between our Lotus Petal and our two blue lands, you can Consider into the oracle after you seize, right? And then in case they have another spirit, you can consider during their turn, which then, you know, mills and stuff. At the top of my head, I think this is fine. So we have one spare card here. What do we want it to be? Uh, well, because we have a consider, I think we'd want it to be uh, something that we can afford to mill away, but could have utility otherwise. So I think maybe you'd want it to be like, not a snuff out, we don't have enough life points, we're going to eight. I kind of like the idea of fitting the Nile spell bombing here somewhere uh, in case we see like, I don't know, like a bunch of endurances because then we can do a really slow play because thought sees into consider into pedal into like Oracle is many spells. So we would run afoul of a mind break trap. So this lets us kind of play it really slow where we can do Nile to soft check and endurance after thoughts using the check and endurance. We can consider around the spirit of the lab, and we have enough mana between our pedal and our and our basics to kind of make all of this work. So, if I was playing on my own, I would stack this oracle on the bottom with, uh, with street wraith above it. Consider in the middle, or I'm sorry, so it'd be oracle on the bottom, street wraith above it, spell bomb in the middle. Consider thought sees. I like that. That that gives us the option to win next turn with a Thoughtseize to protect, and then we can kind of pivot around whatever else whatever else we see here. Um, this gets like kind of awkward if the opponent plays like Alia immediately. So I mean, I didn't ask you, but I played out the pedal here in case of mind break. I feel like if they want to spend their turn destroying the pedal, that's actually kind of fine. Yeah, that works. Because um, if the opponent Thalia's, what we would do is we'd cycle into um, consider, consider, spending two mana, and then cycle immediately into Oracle and just kind of accept losing to you know, like other stuff that happens. There'd be no thoughtsies, basically. 
Outland Liberator. So they do have the option to destroy Lotus Petal. That is challenging for us, but they're not doing it, so that's good. Thought sees. So this puts Opponent us to six. Doing very... Yeah, opponent's doing a very good job of like representing a disruptive thing and then just not doing the disruptive thing. It's kind of interesting. I mean, if they sacrifice the Liberator here in response, we can just blow the Lotus Petal for a blue. Uh, the downside is if we make that play, and I do think it's the right play, but if we make it, it puts another card in Graveyard for Endurance. It's only two cards in the Graveyard for Endurance, though. So what you would then do is Thoughtseize check them for removal, and then you can still cycle into a win. This is why I like checking them with Thoughtseize, because it, if they do have an Endurance, they have to be like, oh, well, if I pop it now, is that even good? It just puts like a card there. Whereas if we did like a force uh, thing at some point, they might catch you for multiple cards in the graveyard. Okay. That's one of the, the things I think people sometimes miss where if they're like, oh, I'll have like a pact of negation to stop their endurance when I go in or something, they assume the opponent will just let them go all the way to the end of their sequence when they have the pact and, ne and never like endurance earlier. So here we see the endurance putting Doomsday on the bottom. And as Max said, I believe we can just win through this, assuming that they don't have anything else. Out there. So we should be able to cycle into... Um, whatever we put the, yeah, Consider. That's, that's the card. And then we'll put the Spell Bomb in the Graveyard. Cycle the Street Wraith. And now we can play the Oracle. We did it! Neat. Uh, do you want to put Doomsday on the top? Ah, uh, let's, let's sign it to the bottom. All right, we got a W. We are now two and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match four, and we are on the play, Maximilian. We have triple discard, force, ponder, this hand is a mulligan for me. Yeah, there's there's just too much uh, things that aren't Doomsday going on here. So um, we can go get Doomsday, but we don't have any blocked mana. Do you keep this? Uh, once again, I think we have too much discard, even though we are supposed to put a card on the bottom. I think our, our larger problem here is that there's no blocked mana again. I said so that. So I would My ghost? probably just, uh, probably just go to five. Okay, so this is capable of turn two doomsday. We put Didn't one trigger at the bottom and a brainstorm. I think Ponder's actually. No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Um, so what you can do if you keep the brainstorm instead is that uh, we can personal tutor, find a doomsday. Oh, no, we're going to five. Ah, dang. Okay, if we had like even one other card, then we could do a same turn kill of brainstorm. Okay, now that I've uh, remembered to count. I'm gonna I'm gonna say yeah, let's go with the ponder. Some people. Some people. The the cool thing you can do uh with brainstorms is just turn them into same turn kills. But uh yeah, we'll we'll go do not same turn kill. Alright, grabbing the namesake of the deck and passing the turn. Alright, so now we can do a daze proof doomsday. And if the opponent represents themselves as someone who might have some like hard counter magic, we'll just go pondering and dig for uh, something good. I don't know. I'd settle for like a daze if they tap out. That'd be cool. Well, that's the island that I use in paper. Well, it's eight cast. Uh, do you? That's... Oh no, you probably do. Oh wow, a grindstone. Um, blue painter. You, you probably do use the 8th edition rather, because I forgot that you're a white border person. This island is originally an invasion. I always use invasion basics. Uh, so this is a little weird now, because if we doomsday, they could just grindstone us. <laughs> um, that is true and accurate. Um, what's the plan? Well, uh, there's also a greater scope issue, right, where opponent can also have force of wills, but we're not in a really position to beat force can't bones. beat everything i kind of feel like since we're uh do they they have a bobble they have an, yeah i think kind of just go um because we're on a multi-five and they have uh a grindstone that they can have mana for 
We can also uh, set up to... um, a pile that, like, if they grindstone us, it won't matter. Yes, there are piles that beat grindstone. So here's what we have to do. Um, we're going to... Uh... We need another blue source, so we might as well get cavern. Uh, and then uh, we need an oracle. Um, let's let's stop and think this out a bit farther. So our main problem right now is how to beat the grindstone that we know is on the board. Yeah, but like, hear me out. So we can do cavern, oracle. We have to get those no matter what. And then we can do edge of autumn, street wraith, because those are different colors. And then we get like a random card in the middle. So like another cycler. That's not the worst idea. Um, it assumes they don't find mana for their grindstone, though, right? Uh, so they only need a lotus petal. Or, I'm sorry, they only need a land because they have uh, Emery lotus petal, so they need any land to do it. Right, so how is your pile of cyclers into cavern and oracle beating a grindstone activation? Because we can ponder into one of the cards right now. Okay. So, like, for... Um, and then where's the other card going? So if they, so let's say we build the pile that I just mentioned. So I can ponder into the second street wraith, and then we leave edge of autumn street wraith on top. So if they activate, it doesn't matter. And then on our following turn, we would just cycle street wraith and then cavern oracle. Well, if you cycle to go get an oracle, what if they hold their grindstone until you're cycling with two cards in the deck, and then they just mill you for two? Can't beat everything. Um... So the thing, the thing we can do to beat a grindstone is that we make um, a pile of LED Oracle, Cycler, Cycler, and another Ponder, and we ponder into the LED right now, and we play it. The next turn, we draw the Ponder, and we play it with three cards left in our deck. If they grindstone, they just grind away the Cyclers, and we get the Oracle. If they don't grindstone, we pick up the Oracle, and they can't kill us with the grindstone. All right, let's do it your way. So what what do you want to select here? We need Oracle, we Diamond, need Ponder. Another Ponder. It has to be Ponder, because Ponder can see one of three cards. So if they Grindstone or not, they still lose. And then you pick two Cyclers that aren't the same color. We have to do it the LED way, because we have two basics, so we're really short on blue sources, which is embarrassing, but whatever. All right, so this is the pile that you described. Correct. And so we want it so that we can ponder into the LED and play it right now, because the LED is the critical LED and Oracle are the critical cards. And we can we can keep Oracle safe on the very bottom. But the LED, we have to go get it now. Right. So uh, where do you do you put ponder next then? Uh, it's not. Well, no, you want you want to draw the ponder immediately. So you put the two cyclers. If they grindstone you. Like just before your draw, st no, 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 undo. Uh, okay, whatever. You're it's gonna ponder. So. Yeah, like I don't know. Unless they force this. <laughs> yeah, I mean we don't beat a force, so it's fine. So, uh, so edge of autumn on the top, followed by ponder, followed by LED, and then draw the LED. So it's edge ponder LED. Yeah, and then we we just immediately play the LED. All right. Now, uh, if they grindstone us before our draw step, we just cycle the Street Wraith, crack LED for blue. If they don't grindstone us, we ponder cracking LED for blue. We just take our Oracle, immediately play it. They don't give an opportunity to catch you with the grindstone. Okay, if we lose the Force of Will, though, I'm going to remind you I wanted to build a cavern pile. That's fine. Um, you, okay, we're immediately losing to grindstone if we did it your way. <laughs> I mean, that assumes that our opponent was smart enough to hold up the grindstone, where my way would have beat them if they just activated it. I, well, I, there's a lot of piles you can build that just beat opponents that are playing bad. This oh, so we're just it, fucking dead. It was, there was no escape. Fine. Okay, we're, we're all losers. That's fine. <laughs> uh, how, how utterly unfortunate. Um, so now, now we definitely lose. Womp womp. Okay, I'm willing to say um, a cast painter is probably a uniquely poor Doomsday matchup. All right, so for this uniquely poor matchup, what do we do? 
So um, I'm not super savvy on mono blue painter, but I'd be willing to think they're probably not a chalice deck if they want to resolve a one CMC spell often. I know, like I know they have sagas, right? But would you be willing to believe these aren't chalice decks? I would also agree with that. Yes. Okay, so uh, I think that means our discard spells are kind of good. Like our duresses become fine, and because I'm not trying hard to beat. A chalice on one, I don't think I'd bring in Flusterstorm, because ordinarily I'd do it to beat their force rolls for a chalice, but since there aren't chalices, I don't want a card like Fluster that's not good against their artifacts, not good against their creatures, so on and so forth. Um, force of Negation is pretty okay, because I'm willing to bet that exiling their Grindstones is worth our time, and they might also be playing, like, Tech Torpor Orbs now, because of the initiative deck. Mm-hmm. I like a couple force and negations. Literal so, two. Okay, so now we have four, uh, 64 cards. What are we boarding out? I like boarding out Days because they're, again, another Ancient Tomb Opal deck. I think Days really underperforms. This is also not another like fast damage type deck, so I think we can afford to cut an Edge of Autumn because uh, you know the life is not really a concern. Um, I think we can shave one personal tutor. I'm usually pretty bullish about keeping a lot of them, but against Grindstone in particular, it's, ooh boy, it is stellar. Uh, they're also like, you know, I don't know, I don't want to get power blasted, stuff like that, whatever. Well, and the, then I think this is another they're a blue deck, but yeah. Where, yeah, I think this is another game where we can probably afford to cut the island. Okay, so that is the sideboarding. Uh, if you wanted to go like a little deeper into this and be like, oh, do I want to play the dumb sub game of like, can I make snuff out usable or whatever? Um, that's maybe something I was thinking about maybe. snuff out there. So I think it's pretty free to I... lead on grief here, pitching the second doomsday. Yes. And then from there, uh, we can like navigate a bit on what we want to do with this ponder. I would like to cast it if uh, we're allowed to. Yeah, um, like ponder into dark root would be amazing. Okay. I believe that we're supposed to take force and negation. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then it, it does look like we're allowed to cast the ponder. Yes. Uh, none of these are mana number three. <laughs> that is true. However, and I'm just going to throw this out there, it would give us a way to fight back on the Protector Doomsday, if that's something we're really concerned with. We do have a dead draw in the middle, though. Well, we can't even cast the Doomsday, though. I know. I'm just saying we have a dead draw in the middle if we decide to keep this. They don't even necessarily have a playable Force of Will right now. I, I think we should shuffle. We do have a bunch of discard spells, right? Because we brought in the duresses too. Force of Will is a very solvable problem for this deck. Okay. Would, I would absolutely accept just like drawing another Force of Will off the top, though. I'm willing to do that. They play Seat, oh. Lotus Petal, versus Bobble. We reveal a Force of Negation. So between their draw step and this bobble, they could have drawn a blue card off two draws. Do you play the Doomsday or do you wait? I feel like it's kind of free to wait. I'm sorry? I don't know, because if we wait a turn, they can go like Ancient Tomb Opal, and then they definitely have the Force of Will. Okay, so Max wants to... I would like to note that if I were playing on my own, I would not cast this. Okay, I mean, we cannot cast it if you don't want to cast it. You are actually operating the card game machine right now. But if you were playing, you would cast this, correct? I would absolutely cast it, yes. This okay. is not, like, for the content. I think that this is what you want to be doing. It's blind draws. You don't know if they have it. Okay, they had it. But, like, you have other doomsdays in the deck. You can draw more manas, stuff like that. It's... But our deck is full of protection. Like uh, That's true. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you. The protection also requires mana, right? What is this? What? Mishra's Research Desk. A one mana artifact, one to activate and sacrifice. Exile the top two cards of your library. You may... Okay. Uh, sure. We're going to pass the Pretty turn. Neat. 
I'd say light up the stage effect with Unearth. I don't like. I think one thing we could have considered is playing the Oracle. Okay. It lets us find a Doomsday. Now we're playing against like a light up the stage every turn. Granted, this is like a top deck, right? We didn't know that they were going to have this, but I do think the game progressing later goes worse for us. Max Opal. I guess it's not light up the stage. It's all. No, it is the top two cards. Choose one. Okay, so it's not quite light up the stage. You get to select one of the two. That's still, I guess, assuming the mana is a non-issue for you, that is better than a bobble, right? Because you're, it's, you know, C2, choose one instead of just get one. Yeah. They get to look at our top card. I would accept drawing another Doomsday here. I would allow it. All right, let's play this Oracle. Oracle resolves, the trigger happens. I imagine we put the Ponder on top. That's... Good, we can ponder and then hit a doomsday and then cast the doomsday. Resolve, maybe. I don't know, that'd be cool. You know, one of their cards is an ancient tomb. There's two other cards. If they're spending a lot of mana on the work, that, uh, uh, that's not good. What are you talking about? We have this 1 3 blocker. Yeah, um, I, I think another thing we have going for us is if we do hit this doomsday, we're still fast enough to beat the saga. That's not good. Uh, is there a grindstone? Do we lose on the spot? There is not a grindstone in the graveyard. Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Turn off auto yields. I accidentally hit the two. Okay. okay. Um, that's fine. We we weren't like super in need of a combat step. Uh. All right. Ponder. Shuffle. Awkward. It's worth noting that uh, for all this protection spell type of thought of uh we didn't see a lot of those either i right? mean there was we just a dress in the pile we shuffled it was like several cards deep we found a forcible off of oracle but that would have taken a draw step i'm just saying that we did find force and a dress in there eventually yeah we we are also getting buried by this work desk so um Incidentally, I think this game is like super lost now just because the saga is going to slide in a painter's um, grindstone. If we draw Doomsday, I believe we have a win. Uh, yes, yes, we do. Also, I think it's offensive that they just keep on choosing white. Why? Well, it's a terrible color. Um, I guess the optimal choice is black, right? Because you don't get got by snuff outs. Yeah. True. That's Snuff outs, but like, you know what I mean, right? Like, terror, not terror, um, Shriek Maw type effects, I guess. I think Snuff Out is like one of the few playable cards where choosing black matters nowadays. Okay. Um, like, it's not like yeah, people are playing want... Ghastly Demise. Right. You don't want it to be blue or red. Um, and yeah, I guess the best one to pick is, is black. For the marbles. Um, I it still think works. I think we lead it's on the possible. brainstorm. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you you need a cycler to break into your pile. You just need to hit the doomsday from here. We didn't do this it. This is not good. No. We are now um, two and two. Bummer. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round. Once again, I have Max Carini, AKA Wonder Pro with me. We are on the draw. I have no clue what our opponent's playing. So the general rule, once again, is turn to Doomsday. This hand is a cantrip away from that. And as force, I'm I'm keeping. Max, you're not gonna tell me to mulligan. I won't allow it. Oh, this is fine. Um, you can brainstorm into a Doomsday and then uh, cast it. Or maybe you'll end up forcing something, who knows? Fury. I have a feeling I'm not allowed to let this one resolve. Yeah, you you do want to force this. It's like a net positive for you to do so. Because, like, on you can't find a Doomsday without your island-esque cards. 
if you like drew one right now and went like pedal cabal at doomsday would you play the um, turn or would you play watery grave uh i really need this brainstorm to be good um but i think tarn is fine uh can you like tarn pedal something like that or you can do like yeah tarn pedal that's okay uh i would like this brainstorm to like i'd like to hold it because if you draw doomsday off the top it's an instant win and if you don't you get like a perfect brainstorm so you're at least not like clogged up on like like a cabal rid or something yeah so right now we're giving our opponent the impression that we're sneaking show between force pitch brainstorm turn and pedal uh yes those are all sneak and show cards shells on zero sure okay so now we cannot uh we, we brainstorm here uh, we're gonna fetch for a basic um we can yeah because we all have to spend we'll have to spend three mana on a dark grid anyways so rather we have rituals to to color convert right you're spending three mana to get three black mana and having the island up ah fudge okay i mean they chose zero uh, and we had three more zeros left in the deck yeah <laughs> It's uh great. That's the turn. There's I don't know some logic to conceding here because like there's a lot of risk ways for us to die, and now they know for sure that this is not sneak and show. But oh, okay, that's a good point. A that's but no, I mean like they don't have a clock, and um, they can still win. It's gonna be close though. Uh, one problem this Trinisphere presents, uh, especially in combination with this Chalice on Zero, is that we don't have a way of beating a subsequent Blood Moon effect because we're locked out of um, casting an Oracle if we use this Petal. Mm -hmm. But we do need a way to get to three mana, cast our Doomsday. Am I allowed to brainstorm here? I want to. Um, I think we're like pretty close to losing. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I think the problem right now is that the war boss just presents way too much damage. So we can't doomsday and win in the same turn. So I think we're just dying to these goblins no matter what. All right. So force and negation. Um, I guess we're on the place. Our dress isn't terrible. Those would be the cards that I'm interested in right off the bat. I think dress is terrible. Okay. So it's 61. I think this is another like you can cut grief type of matchup. Um, is if you run into a lot of problem issues where it's like hard to have enough black cards in your hand to do like a fast doomsday and a grief. Um, and if you have to pick between like a fast doomsday and like a thought seize or whatever, that's like much easier to resolve mentally in your head because you would just cast the doomsday. Ooh, do you... Days is fine to keep. Okay. Earlier you talked about how you didn't like it versus uh, like. Fast mana tomb deck, so that's where my well, mind went. The critical difference, I, I guess, to elaborate on that is that there's a difference between a deck that can have like tombs, opals, and then piecemeal cards that aren't auto loses versus like tombs and then like maybe spirit guides and then the cards that are absolutely auto loses. Like, a blood moon ends the game, so I'll I'll pick up a land to counter that, uh, and just accept like dying to spirit guide sometimes. Whereas like an opponent that goes like tomb, three petals, opal, burning wish. I mean, I can't daze around that anyways, right? Yeah. I think it's I think it's the combination of like tomb plus opal or tomb plus a ton of rituals that makes days like kind of mundane. Aren't you doomsday? Uh, another thing we could have thought about a little harder, because we do have some underperforming cards in this deck, is having Snuff Out as a unit counter to Magus of the Moon. Okay. That card's really good against us. Did the opponent just skip their turn? Uh, they mulligan to four, so there's a chance that they kept a hand that didn't do anything. No, 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 not, no, not, not Psalm. That's not Psalm. I mean, uh, Fudge. I, I mean, not we fudge. have the Underground Sea. Like, do we really need triple Underground or triple Blue Source? There's like no reason to swamp from here, especially when we don't have snuff outs. Okay. Um, okay. 
Yeah, let's let's go do our doomsday. So we want an oracle, and then like I think we just build like a cycler pile. Yes, uh, I think cyclers are fine. Uh, one thing you might want to include is that since removal is somewhat hard for them to find, um, you can do a pile where you have like a lotus petal to check a blood moon effect, then like a cavern to check chalice. Because now, if they want to hold up very obvious pyroblast interaction, you can just take draw steps against that. You can afford to make one of your cyclers an edge of autumn because you have a big pile of four lands total. I'm just going to do this. Okay. Um, this accepts losing to Blood Moon, though, because none of these are petals. But we have a force for Blood Moon, and they have no mana in play. Not Magus of the Moon is a non-non-creature, so it's a Blood Moon that you cannot force of negation. Fine. Like, why? This is so secure. You're at nine life. They have no damage. I, I don't know why you wouldn't, like, set yourself up for success. Because force of negation is also, like, a counterspell only on their turn, so you can't force to protect your own. How are we uh, constructing this? The way you can do it to maximize your ability to go in for a quick win is just to have the top three be Cycler, Cycler, Oracle. And then you put uh, Cavern on the very bottom, followed by Petal, and you can just take extra draw steps depending on what threat presents itself first. Because Moon effects are most likely due to the number and the relative mana cost compared to Chalice on 2, I mean, um, you, you want the Petal on top in case you need to beat a Moon effect. Whereas if they hold up a Pyroblast or try to go for Chalice on 2... Do we um, just let this go? Can't... Yes, you just let this go, because they've locked themselves out of any interaction on their own, so you can just play land 3, cycle, cycle, oracle, go to game 3. Works for me. If anyone here uh, thinks that I'm being short with Max, it's just, uh, I'm running on a, I have to do something shortly, so I gotta get moving. It's no disrespect to Max, I just, I need to finish up this league. Yeah, the... You're not, you can't tell on YouTube time, but it's actually very late in the the wizard dueler dimension right now. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've won game number two, and now we are going to go to game number three. Is there any play draw think, difference? Yeah, I think on the draw, all your discard spells are worse, because you're probably not going to get to resolve them. I think we can take out all the thought seizes. Oh, did we still have griefs and duresses in the deck? What? Okay, never mind. Um, and I think this might, yeah, this might be the snuff out game. And um, I think, uh, I don't think Consider is like super great here. We can cut Consider because it's a CMC one. And we can cons we can consider either the two subtleties or the two briefs. Um, I like subs on it, the draw. Like counter yeah, those. So yeah. It's like, it's a tempo card-ish. Oh, and Grief also because we added more black spells that I, you know, right to replace the Thoughtsies is heading out. Too late on that. Uh, I want to keep this. The draw? You think... Ugh, fine. You want to you want to ship? If this was the play, I'd be all over this. But on the draw, I feel like... Like, what interactive piece can we beat? Do you bottom an oracle and keep this? I don't know. I think you have to bottom one of the lands because you're probably going to pitch one of these oracles to a force of negation, and personal tutor is your path to... Um... Okay, Actually, but... I guess we can bottom one oracle, keep the other, and then ugh, three lands is, like, kind of decent. Well, that's yeah. what I was saying. That, like, you, you don't need an oracle in hand for any reason. That's why I was like, you bottom an oracle, because you're going to pitch the other. Well, an oracle does make your hand a little faster if it's in your hand, uh, if it's already in your hand. I have to force this, right? Yeah, because right now our hand doesn't do anything. It's kind of a bummer. I do like that Cabal Ritual helps you beat Chalice 1. Yeah. Um, if we, oh, okay, well, um, what do you think about just like right fetching now? C here? Fetching C or playing one is fine. I, I like the idea of just playing runner, 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 black sources in case we have to like move fast under another chalice. So we'll grab the doomsday past the turn. And there's like maybe this intuitive thing where you're like, well, if you want to have a chance to get accelerations or whatever, why are you locking in your draw step as Doomsday now? Because even if you draw it, you want to have three mana. It's because we're trying to get it under another chalice. We might never get to resolve this personal tutor. It's dicey if they just play like a goblin. Yeah, but I mean, we don't really have. Okay, well, we do have both basics. 
now we need to find a uh, cabal red or a dark red, and then we need to find another petal to secure our oracle draw. Uh oh, fable. <sighs> Do you show them the basic? Yeah, it's fine. All right. I don't think they're gonna like play any differently uh, as a result of this. They discard Trinisphere. I'm actually a little surprised by that. Um, it's kind of interesting. Oh, wow. Okay, I think we lost. <sighs> Not looking good. This is a goblin, by the way, so it is forced to attack and it trigger. It makes the rabble master larger. Not looking good. We definitely flooded this game. Yeah, this is not great. We got stuck on lands in one game, and now we're drawing, like, way too many. Um, we have no Trinisphere, no Chalices. There's still, like, a vague out for a same turn kill, but I think we're actually dead to combat damage next turn. Well, we oh, drew... Um, yeah, we can hard cast this snuff out. Um, from here on out, I think you need to hold at least one land, because our draws in order basically need to be Ritual and then Brainstorm. Okay. And well, actually, even then, I think we're still just dying, but um, yeah, I mean, they have five power on board, yeah. So, I guess I was supposed to hold the land in case we drew brainstorm for turn, uh, yes, actually, we kind of, yeah, because then we could brainstorm into dark grit LED cycler, and then that would save the game because we'd have two cards to put back, so yeah, so playing play one land, yeah. yeah. You get to hard cast the stuff out though, which I think is kind of cool and neat. Yeah, I just didn't need to play underground C three to do it. Yeah. Um, so we, I guess, we inadvertently locked ourselves out of admittedly a very narrow chance of winning. But we drew Panda. Yes. Are they going to Simeon Spirit Guide Pyro? They do. Okay. Well, we tried. All right. So that is the ball game. Unfortunately. Even with the expert Doomsday player here, I, I weighed us down like an anchor to a 2-3. Uh, Max, thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it, despite maybe not having the best league. Um, once again, you can find Max on Twitter uh, and Twitch at WonderPro. That name is on the screen, but also those links will be in the description down below. Max, really, thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, sure. Uh, I think this deck has like a lot of very approachable matchups. Maybe you don't get discouraged. Um, you know, if you run into it, if you kind of like get got a lot of the time, because you, you know, you have to pick your spots, what you lose to, what you don't. You saw that a lot in this league. And I think this made for like you know, good content, I guess, even if it wasn't like a great result. Um, there's a lot of like branching paths. I think this deck's kind of fun, even if, you know, you're stacking the deck a lot. So it plays the same quote unquote. Um, but, you know, give it a try. Uh, you don't have any, like, unwinnable matchups. It's neat. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.